Hey, in this short video, I'll be answering a question I get asked quite a lot by my students and also people that I speak to about DaVinci Resolve 18. And that's all to do with the snapping tool and how it works. And actually sometimes how it can be quite frustrating, but I've got a couple of little tips for you to make the most out of it. So without further ado, let's snap to it. So just before we get started guys, welcome. My name is Alex Cameron. I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer and I really enjoy helping people to cut that learning curve with DaVinci Resolve, which I think is one of the best video editing applications out there. And again, as I say, please let me know in the comments if you're new to the channel. It'd be great to see you along here. Consider subscribing perhaps if you'd like to, because there's lots of new content coming out regularly on the channel and I'd really like to help a lot of you with your journey. Anyway, because this is a video about snapping, I thought we'd better keep it snappy. Let's jump in. Okay, so here I am inside the edit page of DaVinci Resolve 18. Simple timeline in front of me, just a few shots here laid out onto a timeline, just to kind of give you an idea of what exactly snapping does and how it can help us, also how sometimes it can frustrate us, but equally how we can navigate past that with a very simple pro tip. So what is snapping? Well, snapping is this magnetized effect that you see as I scroll through with the playhead and I move to an edit point and it snaps quite aggressively to the end of that clip or the beginning of that clip. And it can be turned on in the toolbar just here. You can see there's a little magnet icon, which obviously would make sense because it's sort of this magnetized effect. It also shows you there that there's a keyboard shortcut for snapping, which is N. So you can either turn snapping off or back on again using the icon here, or you can press the N key to turn it off and turn it on again. And just to show you what it looks like when it's turned off, when I turn it off and I move the playhead, you can see that it moves very smoothly through all of the edit points and it makes placing my playhead precisely in the right place really easy indeed. So you may like to have it off, you might like to have it on. Do let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I'm gonna turn it back on for a moment and I'll just show you that it's also the same in the cut page. If I jump to the cut page, when I move with snapping turned on, again, my playhead is snapping and the same thing happens if I was to place my playhead here and then do a trim, I'll get close to it and it will snap. Yeah, and particularly it works like that as well. If we talk about that in the top timeline here, if I come back, do a trim and it will snap. There you go, quite aggressively snapping. And that's all very well and good. The snapping icon in the cut page is over here and you can toggle it off, toggle it back on again, and it works exactly the same way. So this is really cool because you can do a lot of things with this. For example, because things snap to the playhead, you can often position a playhead in the place where you want maybe the trim to happen and then just simply trim back to the playhead and you know pretty much straight away that's gonna be exactly bang on. You can also move a clip and have that snap to the playhead as well. So that's another thing that you can do there. And again, it just enables us to make sure that we're not gonna get any sort of unwanted dead space or overwrite any clips by mistake. It's really helpful for that indeed. It also works with markers as well. So let's say we placed a marker either in the timeline or perhaps in the clip itself, just by selecting a clip and pressing M for a marker. So now you can see that actually this will snap to the marker in the clip. You can see how it's aggressively snapping there. And again, we can do that here as well. So snap to the timeline marker. So again, it works really well, and for a lot of the cases, it's a really helpful tool. However, it does frustrate people, and the reason why is because you probably saw there that as I move close to the playhead, sorry, as I move the playhead close to the end of the edit point, it snaps quite aggressively, which means that if I wanted to maybe, say, make a trim somewhere between my edit point and where my playhead is, and I started to drag the clip back, it would snap quite aggressively to the playhead itself. And it's sometimes hard to get the clip you know, positioned exactly where you want, especially if the playhead is maybe just a few frames off the end, it's difficult for you to get it exactly right. And it's a very harsh snap. If I were to turn snapping off, however, so turn snapping off and now start to do that trim, you can see how much more of an option I've got in terms of where I end up with that trim. A lot of people find that to be quite frustrating because when it's on, as I say, it's very difficult. Equally, if you are positioning a clip, so let's say I was gonna position this clip and I wanted to position it maybe just before this edit point, so maybe just sort of here somewhere in between where the playhead is and the actual edit point, I couldn't do it with snapping turned on, it's too aggressive. So one thing you could do is obviously move your playhead, move forward a few frames maybe to where you want it, snap to the playhead, that's a way around it. But it is a little bit of a pain because it means moving the playhead. And let's say your playhead's way over here, it means you know moving the clip, grabbing the playhead, putting it in the right place, and then moving a clip back and snapping it to the playhead. It's a little bit of a fuss. You can get round it by zooming in a little bit more. So if I were to zoom in a little bit more, and then I had the same situation, 
Again, you could then position your clip a little bit closer to that playhead or that edit point, but unfortunately, it's still gonna still be quite aggressive. So what can we do? And this is also, obviously, if you're zoomed out, the trouble is if you start moving your clip and you want it to, to try and place it you know, before that edit point, it's gonna be very hard to do, and you can't start zooming whilst you're dragging the clip, which means you've gotta stop dragging the clip, move your playhead, zoom in, you know, lots of things that are gonna take up amazing amounts of time if you're doing it regularly. So here's my pro tip. You might wanna zoom in a little bit for this, just to help us a bit, but in this case, I've got my playhead way over here, so that's not helping me, I can't move my playhead, and I've decided I want to drag this clip to just before this particular edit point here, now, what I'm gonna do is as I started the drag already, so that's no good, I can't just turn snapping off at this point, um, but what I can do is just tap the end key to temporarily disable snapping. And now, because I've already started the drag, what happens is I get no snapping, I can position my clip exactly where I want it, let go, and you'll notice that snapping has now turned itself back on. So whilst you are dragging or trimming, if you try and trim, so here we go, let's try and trim this clip without this sort of snapping going on in the middle here. And I'm gonna just temporarily start, I'm gonna start my trim, and then temporarily disable the snapping by pressing the end key down just once. And now I can reposition that trim exactly where I want it, let go, and you can see now snapping is back on. I've had a really nice precise trim and everyone's all the happier. And this usually helps clear up an enormous amount of that frustration that people find with the snapping tool. It works exactly the same in the cut page as well. And I use it normally like this all the time. I have snapping on and then I just temporarily disable it as I find that I need to if I'm either trimming or repositioning a clip and I can't get it quite accurately enough with snapping turned on. So there we go, hopefully now that's helped alleviate some of those frustrations you might have about the snapping tool and actually you can now see it as a really powerful feature indeed. And if that's helped you, please let me know in the comments down below. I do like to hear your thoughts. And again, if it's helped you, it makes my day. It really does mean a lot. So that's great, please let me know about that. Equally in the comments, do also let me know, do you prefer to have snapping on generally or do you prefer to have snapping off generally? I think it's really interesting to see what the sort of poll is on that one. Who likes to have it on, who likes to have it off? And uh, yeah, we'll see how that all comes out. But again, thank you very much for watching the video, guys. Really appreciate it. And if you have subscribed already, then you're an absolute wonder. Thank you very much indeed. If you haven't, though, this is a great time to do it. Just hit that subscription button, turn on the notification bell, and then you'll know every single time I post a new video all about DaVinci Resolve 18. So thank you very much indeed. Hope to see you in the next one. See you soon.